Hi, this is Daryl from Brady Family Tree, and this is a follow-up to the uh, last YouTube video, Making Easy Easier, um, about doing your ancestry DNA grouping. What we're going to do today is have a bit more of a look at uh, uh, what was shown last time on how the grouping system works, and then uh, do a little bit of a uh, run-through on how to set up the grouping and how to start doing the grouping uh, for your four grandparent groups. If you haven't checked out the family tree site, uh, it's bradyfamilytree.org. Anyway, onto the DNA. So what we're actually looking at is uh, how to set up the grouping in your uh, ancestry DNA results. Um, what I'm going to be doing is actually working with my dad's DNA. So rather than my kit, I'm actually going to uh, start with dad's, which is what we saw in the previous video. And um, here, what we're looking at is here, I've already grouped his matches, so I'll just uh, revisit how that process has been done. What we want to do is we want to actually work on this grouping system here, and we want to create some groups. Now, the way that my system differs from a lot of the other systems that are actually being uh, uh, recommended on online is that they actually focus on a large number of coloured groups. Um, I'm actually trying to limit the coloured groups down, but I actually focus on linking more DNA tests uh, so that I can actually work on an individual and then switch to another DNA tester that would be related to that in individual. And by grouping each of them identical, as in with the same process, we can actually work out on those branches. Um, so in this case, uh, uh, we go through and set up uh, a standard grouping system for each of the DNA kits that we manage. Um, once we've done that, we're actually looking at, uh, in most cases, we're looking at starting out with the common ancestors. If you have a, a good tree and you have common ancestors uh, already showing up in your DNA matches um, and you verify that they are correct in your tree so you know how they link to you, then you can already start to link people to the the groups that you've created. Now, for someone who doesn't know the groups, uh, they don't have any common matches showing up or they haven't built a tree and they just need to start from scratch, I'm going to do another video, um, which will actually be for someone with no uh, common, common ancestor suggestions from Ancestry. And in that system, you would actually start with some unknown groups. Um, you start with trying to find the four biggest groups. Um, but today we're actually looking at people that have built a tree and do have the common ancestors. So to get started, uh, just a recap on what I did last time. So what we've got here is we've got, we're in my dad's DNA and we're actually wanting to look at adding these groups to the people that um, he's related to. So here you can see myself, uh, his mum and my sister. So the relationship for each of us is known. So, um, the way that we're actually setting up the, the grouping is that we would actually look at how each person relates to the tester. So in this case, the tester is my father. And if we're talking about his, his mother, she only actually matches him on two sides. So two of the four dots. Whereas, and so what we would do is we would actually link her to those two dots, mother's maternal and mother's paternal. But if we're talking about myself and my sister, we actually relate to my dad on all four of his dots. So we would actually get a tick in all four of those dots. Now, anyone that's got multiple dots relating to the tester can't really be used for sorting your DNA. But I'll go through that when we get to that. And um, what we're actually looking at doing is just actually identifying the people that are already known and linking them to the already created categories. Then we'll work on the people that aren't known and how they would fit with those categories. Okay, so how do we go about doing that? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch to my auntie's DNA test. And at the moment, I have not got any groups created for her. So uh, what we're looking at here is we're looking at a person who is linked to a tree. They have got some DNA common ancestor suggestions. And what we want to do is we want to start grouping the results for this person. So the easiest thing to do would be to go through and actually look at creating those, those groups. So here we're just creating a custom group and it's always the same groups that I always use. So, so let's go 
father's paternal line and we'll give that the, the uh, dark blue dot save create another one father's maternal line and we'll give that the light blue dot save create another one mother's maternal line we'll give that the dark pink dot create another one mother's paternal line we'll give that the light pink dot now in a lot of cases what you'll find is that you'll actually be able to identify that someone is on the mother's side or the father's side but you won't be able to work out which uh, line that they are actually in so paternal or maternal for that side of the family so what i do is i create some other groups and that would be let's just type it in father's side the very dark blue dot And mother's side. We'll give it the very dark pink dot. So at this point, we've created our groups, but we don't have anything in them. So what we want to do now is we want to look at so understanding that we're in my auntie's DNA and we're looking at her relationship to each of her DNA matches. So in this case, we're looking at her mother. So we know this is her mother. Uh, we've done a tree we can confirm that that's her mother if we actually go into here ancestry is suggesting that this is actually her mother so in that case she matches my auntie on both mother's lines we know that her mother would be linked to the mother's maternal and her mother's paternal then what we would do is that we would actually give uh, in notes, I would put who the person is. So in a lot of cases, it, you will find that um, the lady's name may be her married name. So I would often put in there what her birth name was. So in this case, I would record my grandmother as her birth name, not as her married name. In my case, I'm actually adding a link to where how they link in, in my tree. Um, and then what we would do is we would end with which groups that she's actually connected to. So her link to my uh, to my auntie is on the waters true line i've also given a star to this match because in my in this situation my grandmother is linked to the tree we know what the relationship and it's complete so i'm, I'm happy with that we now go back and we'll see that uh, my auntie's first match now has the color coding system against it. Uh, the next three people are siblings. Those siblings carry all of the groups that match. So rather than go in, we can actually go in here and we can go add groups and we can go, they're common to all of them. Common to all of them. Again, common to all of them. So we've we basically started putting the color coding system against the people that are confirmed matches. Here we're moving on to the next thing. This this is uh, my auntie's uncle, so the brother of my grandmother, and so we know that he is actually on my on on the mother's uh, side and we know that he actually links to what is and true which is exactly what we had before so here he would have the same dots as her mother and just to keep it even what is and true so this is the, the line that is common to them so what is true and and ancestry is giving us those uh, prompts for what the connection is the next we have my self and my sister again we would be common to all of my auntie's four lines so very easy for me to go through and add all four lines
what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump ahead and do some of her matches uh, that will only be on one line, and then I'll show you how that becomes important for uh, grouping the unknown matches. Okay, so I've gone off and uh, sorted the matches that match more than one group using the common ancestor suggestions that Ancestry makes. And from here, what we'll do, first of all, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you won't miss any of the upcoming videos. The next video I'm going to do is going to be for people without any common matches. So we can see from the grouping that has been done so far that we're starting to get a number of people that we've confirmed in each of the lines. Those people uh, in most cases have more than one common line to the tester, my auntie. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we're going to actually see that I've actually tagged the person who is just showing up as mother's maternal line. So this person uh, is has a, a common ancestor suggestion. I've confirmed them in the tree and they're actually uh, correctly suggesting how they match to my auntie. So if we actually view this match, what we can actually say is that this person is uh, linked on the true Anderson line and that is only for my auntie's mother's maternal. And the way that we see that is that the suggestion shows the tester, their mother's maternal line. So this test is getting a only a dark pink dot. So that means that the shit matches that this tester and my auntie share would have received their DNA from the same line. So what we can do, if we have a look, you'll see that a number of the matches actually show multiple dots, but they should all show the mother's maternal line as a common line to all of them. So that, that said, when we actually are looking at people that haven't been grouped yet, we can comfortably say that those people will also be part of the mother's maternal line. So I'll just go through and mark all those. So that's just marking those. Then we'd say add to group, and all those matches would now end up with the mother's maternal line against them. Now that we've actually grouped the mother's maternal line, so scrolling down to the next match with only one colour, here we have a match that is mother's paternal line. Again, I can confirm that I've checked that against my tree and that I believe that that person is definitely just on the mother's paternal line. So if we go into that person, we should be able to do the same thing, and that is we should be able to look at the matches and see that they all have a common mother's paternal line. So we can actually go through, and anyone that's not tagged with that would get a tag in mother's paternal line. And then once we've done that, we add them to the group, and we now have a bunch of matches on the mother's paternal line. Again, going back and scrolling down. So we've done both the mother's sides with individual matches. So let's see if we can see a father's side. So yes, here we have a match. This is someone that's common ancestor that has been proven to be on her father's paternal line. So if we go into that match and we look at the shared matches, each shared match should share the dark blue dot. So we go through and we have a look. The ones that don't have the dark blue dot should actually be added to that group. So we go father's paternal line and we tag each of those. And then once we've done that, we would actually tag those. So those matches would now have father's paternal line. If we go back, so now we've done three of those lines. So we're now looking for father's maternal line, a single match. So we scroll down and we find a match on father's maternal line. Again, it's because we've had a common ancestor. We know that it's a person that's confirmed to be part of the father's paternal line only. So we should be able to, again, look at the matches in shared matches. Each of the matches should be common to the father's 
maternal line. So we scroll through, we can see that most of them are already selected with that. We get down to the ones that aren't, add to group, find this maternal line. You'll see that we're actually selecting some matches that already have father's paternal line. So that's just confirming that those people are actually shared to both lines. And here we have someone who is actually matching the mother's maternal line as well. So it's likely that that person matches all four lines. We just need to confirm that with the tree and the relationship to that person. So once we've gone through and selected them all, we would actually mark those as father's maternal line. So now if we look at our groups, we'll actually see that we now have quite a large amount of people that are actually confirmed in those groups. One of the things we can do is we can look at somebody that's confirmed with multiple matches. My auntie's mother, we know that everyone would be on the mother's side. The grouping that we've done so far should have actually allocated a lot of these matches, the shared matches, to the correct groups. But you will find that some of those matches have not been allocated yet. So what we can do here is that we can actually add those people to the mother's side. We know they're on the mother's side. And we can do that for each person that's not currently linked. So we've been able to determine that they are a match from the mother's side, but we just it's just not giving us an easy representation of which of the mother's lines. What we need to remember with adding them to mother's side is that we, we know that they're matches that are common to the tester's mother, but we can't see that which line they're from. If we solve which line they're from, we would remove them from the mother's side group because the mother's side group is a holding group. You're only using until you know which line they connect to. So we, we really only want to focus on shorting to our four main groups. From that, we would actually then uh, have the two holding groups, which would eventually be solved and sorted into their correct groups. So the, the, the larger the number of the four main groups, the better. The smaller the number of the two extra side groups, um, the better. So the same thing can be done with someone who is both sides of the father's side. So if we scroll down to um, my auntie's uncle that is on her father's side, we could actually look at his shared matches. We can't use his DNA to sort which line father's paternal or father's maternal, but we can say that everybody that's connected to him is likely to be on her father's side. So we can scroll through and look at the people that are actually not linked yet. You can see that quite a few of them are. So here we can actually say that this person is more than likely on the father's side, but at the moment we haven't solved which side they're from. Now for anyone that's... Uh, uh, realize that I've got quite a lot of notes in these people. Um, you, yes, you're probably uh, wondering how that's actually come about. To do this video, I actually deleted all of the groups that were related to my auntie. Um, the reason I did that was so that I could start this video with somebody who had no groups set up. The fact that I was fairly confident in the process that I go through with sorting the groups meant that I knew that within an hour or two, I would be able to get back to where I was before I deleted the groups. So we can already see that we've got a large number of people that are sitting in the correct groups. We've got some people that are sitting in the father's side or mother's side. What I will say to that is that the ancestry grouping system already gives you a maternal and paternal line if you've allocated that, uh, if you've assigned that already to your DNA matches. Um, what I would say is that it is not always accurate. So if you actually look at matches that are paternal side only, I wouldn't suggest that you go through and mark all of those as uh, father's side um, because it's not always exactly accurate. Some matches from the mother's side or that match the mother's side as well will come up in the, in the matches. 
and that can cause you problems if you use that for part of your sorting. So I would only use the matches that you've confirmed as a way of sorting your matches. So based on what we've worked through, you should be able to go through, you should be able to create the groups, label them and color them in the system that I'm using. Then you should be able to go into your common ancestor matches for that test and actually look at the suggested relationships and work on confirming that those people are correct. Once you've confirmed they're correct, you, then you should be able to allocate them to the correct groups that we've created. You should be able to work through all of your common ancestor suggestions and actually group them off. Then once you've done that, you should be able to go back to your general list, work on your common ancestors that come up to a single group and actually look at the shared matches that are suggested and, and label those. And that's what we do before we start working on the unknown matches. So the most important things to look at is that you, your DNA test that has a family tree attached to them, that they are getting common ancestor matches and that those common ancestor matches you've now proven by looking at how that person links to the tree of the tester and that the suggestion is correct and then implement the color system. Okay, so I hope that's helpful for people. What I'd like to recommend now that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of the new videos that I put up. It'd also be great if people would comment below uh, with any questions that they have on doing this process um, that will help me create the, the next videos. If you haven't looked at the first video in this series, please click on the link at the end and that will, that will give you a little bit more insight into why I do the colouring system this way.